Hello, hello, hello everyone, Melder on TV here with another vlog. So today, I like to go back into my, um, what's my favorite kind of thing. So we've, we've, we've covered some pretty interesting topics in the last couple of vlogs I've made. Um, but this one I go back to a more of a fun vlog, one that's a lot easier for me to make, fun to make, and uh, not easy, not mean that I don't put a lot of thought into it, because I do. Um, so today I like to cover what my favorite zones are. So I'll give you my favorite zone for each continent. Uh, why? and um, then ask, you know, at the end, what, what your favorite zones are, maybe suggesting to use the criteria that I've uh, scored each zone with. So I'll provide you the top five zones, I, my top five zones in each, in each um, uh, continent, and the scores I give them. I'll be scoring them with four different criteria. And the four criteria are, which you'll see above me here, are aesthetics, and that includes um, not, not just the how it looks but um, the the different models they've used in the zones um, how well they've kind of put it together to make a, a, a cohesive unit uh, and how well the colors go together and also the music so the music is also part of the aesthetics the NPCs everything that kind of builds the setting for your adventure in Azeroth okay so that's one is aesthetics the next is lore self-explanatory quests and I'm not going to to go, you know, this isn't number of quests. I know a lot of you who are like the speed leveling, you like zones that have a lot of quests. Talk about the quality of the quests and the variety of the quests. And finally, the fourth criteria is world PvP. If you don't play any PvP server, obviously this doesn't mean anything to you, um, so this won't go into your scores at all. But for me, um, I like playing World of Warcraft in a PvP setting because it's, it's a war, right? So I like to be part of that and like to look over my shoulder and see if someone's going to attack me. So. I'm not saying ganking is fun, but I am saying that the chance of engaging yourself in world PvP uh, will get points. So one criteria I want to talk about about this list is that I, if you'll, if you, you'll probably notice this going through it, I did not include any zones that were not contested. They have to be contested in order to be in this list. I think that I will make I will make a a, a video one day about leveling zones and starting areas which will be a separate video but for this in order to be my favorite zones they have to be experienced at least somewhat equally by both factions and my second criteria is that both factions need to have at least a quest hub in that area um, so you know places like western plaguelands uh, it did not make it to the list because there is no official horde uh, quest hub let's start with Kalimdor the ancient lands of Kalimdor, as um, Medivh told Thrall and Jaina in Worldcraft 3. So, um, Kalimdor, we'll start with my um, my fifth favorite, or least favorite zone um, in Kalimdor, and I know a Def Campbell will hate me for this one, but Winter Spring is my number five um, for Kalimdor. Um, aesthetically wise, I mean, it's uh, it, it's beautiful, right? I mean, it, it, it's a winter wonderland, right? But, um, I think the aesthetics can't really save it. I gave it a 4.5 for aesthetics, um, so that's my score for aesthetics. I think it's it's very it's one of the most beautiful zones in the game. I'll never I'll never ever say anything against that. Um, you have the the frozen lakes. You have um, the, the elite area to the north that's really awesome with the the giants. You have um, you know these settlement these uh, these these ancient uh, night elf settlements and furrow bogs and. It's just, it's really cool. It's a winter wonderland. But the lore aspect to me is very low, and I got a two from that. It's actually the lowest one in this list in both continents. There's really not much there. I mean, the Night Elves went there after the Great Sundering and set up a base. You have Timberwall Hold. That's about it. I mean, um, again, I could be wrong about this, but I've done a pretty extensive amount of reading um, in the Warcraft lore, and Winter Spring is not one that pops up a lot. So for me, lore wise, um, it's a huge part. For me, it's not just the aesthetics, there's lore as well. I gave it a 2. As far as quests are concerned, I think there's a lot of interesting quests. Um, there's a good variety of quests, not the most in the game, but I gave it a 3 there. So you've got, you know, the quests are fun, but they're mostly go out and kill thing quests, which are is most of the quests in the game, I understand that. But uh, I do like a little bit of variety um, and a little bit of ingenuity in quests. And, um, you know, going out and killing things because they're, you know there is is great and good and i think that's it could be a lot of fun for grinding this but it can get a little grindy in winter spring in my opinion um 
but I do think um, since there's a lot of different new NPC models, we have those, those like uh, the uh, chill wings, and we have those other things. Um, I think that's really cool too. And but mostly it's to kill a bunch of bears, kill some yetis, which we've seen before. So, um, but otherwise, I think it's a, it, the quests are are pretty good. Uh, as far as world PVP is concerned, I gave it a 3.5. World PVP is a lot is 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 high if if there's kind of three things. It's the first time factions meet each other, which of course Winter Spring is not that. It's a 55 level zone. If there's a large range in level, which again is not, there's only like pretty much five level ranges that are going up there. And the third part is I feel that high level zones have the least amount of world PvP because everyone's just trying to get the 60. And you'll notice in high level zones, um, high level meaning like past 30. Ish. So in the 40s and 50s, I feel that everyone's just kind of like, hey, gives you a nod, even if you're the opposing faction, let me get let me get to what I need to do, guys. So I think World PvP could be higher, but I do get some World PvP in Winter Spring, I definitely see it, uh, so I give it a 3.5 there. So it's a total of 13. Okay, move up to number 4. Number 4 on my list for Kalimdor is for Alice. Um, the aesthetics are great, I gave it a 4. It's a um, beautiful forest. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most beautiful forest in the game, but it's definitely up there. Uh, you have the, the twin colossi up to the north, which are really fun to look at. You have uh, Feathermoon Stronghold is, is amazing, amazing for the alliance. It's a great base. It's an island base has a has a ferry, uh, which is amazing. The Grim Totem area. You have the Dire Mall area. So uh, as far as aesthetics are concerned, I think it's it's one of the better zones in the game. Laura gave it a 2.5, and you're gonna say 2.5. What about Dire Mall? That's exactly it. <laughs> the quest, the lore of For Alice is pretty much Dire Mall. Um, Eldrith the Lost was a, an ancient Night Elven city, but it's not part of the zone. In my opinion, it's not. Um, it's an instanced area. It, it's the outside of an instance, and I usually don't consider that parts of a zone. Um, however, I think that um, there's still some interesting lore. You have the Grim Totems there. You have um, Night Elf Settlement's been there for a very long time. You have a Torn settlement that's been there for a long time. You have some interesting uh, animals and creatures and things like that that are sitting there. You have the Harpies to the north. So there is some interesting lore, um, but there's not much there. It's kind of like Winter Spring. I gave it a 2.5. As far as quests are concerned, I gave it a uh, 4. I think there's some interesting quests um, in Feralis. Uh, for horror, you have the uh, for alliance you have those grim totem quests which are a lot of fun and you go in there and you have to kill certain um, amounts of the grim totems and you have to free the sprite darters uh, as alliance is horde you have to do those music quests where you have to put shrink the animals down and put them in the thing uh, in the in that drum looking thing that the troll gives you you have some interesting quests you have to kill some elite mobs which I always like so I think quests are a lot more variety than winter spring in my personal opinion. Um, so I gave it a four. Uh, World PvP, I gave it a three. Again, it's a high level zone. It doesn't meet those. It meets those. It meets the one one of the criteria that's a high level zone. So World PvP actually drops. So I gave it a three there. Okay. So then my number three is Desolus. Um, and as far as aesthetics, I actually gave it a four. And I know you people are going to be like, "Wait, Desolus? That's like a desolate place, right?" Like, no, actually, it's not. The map tiles and the map has a lot of variety. So you have places like the Satire Place to the north near the Alliance base is very different from the rest of the map um, tile that they use. Uh, there's a Naga place to the north where that mage sends you on those quests to get those artifacts. You have um, the Centaur City to the north near Maradon. You have Shadow Prey Village to the west where the, the Horde base is. That's just very, like, it's like a watery kind of area. So I think the Desolus um, is extremely interesting, and I think it has a lot of variety in its in its uh, map usage and and, and zone um, different colors and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of variety in colors, even sky. The sky is very dark in the center, then it gets lighter in certain parts. So as far as lore is concerned, I gave Desolus a 3. It's not the most lore-rich zone in the area. However, it is the essential home of the Centaur, which is pretty interesting. You also have the um, Kodo that migrate through there and actually go through the life cycle and die at the end. Um, you have satires. You have that. You have those uh, quests with the mage in the north, uh, who, I, who I, I mentioned earlier, where you have to go and kill some naga and get some ancient artifacts. You have the burning blade presence in that in that stronghold that's near the alliance base in the north. So there's a lot of interesting lore. So that's pretty cool. And, and as far as quests are concerned, I also gave it a four. There's a lot of variety in quests. Again, that naga area to the north. Go uh, the, that goblin gives you that thing that to uh, to tame the Kodo. That's an really really fun quest, 
and I actually had a lot of fun questing in Desolus. So you know how you have the uh, the Centaur Civil War where you have to like pick sides. A lot of interesting quests in Desolus, a lot of variety. So I gave it a four. As far as World PvP is concerned, I also gave it a three for the same reasons I gave for Alsa three. It's a higher level zone. Um, it isn't the first time a Horde and Alliance meet, and there isn't a huge range in, in level. So I gave it a, I gave it a three there. My number two area, uh, questing zone in, in uh, Kalimdor is Tenaris. So to me, Tenaris is the apotheosis of all deserts, right? It's like, it's, it's desert. When you think of desert, in my mind, since I played WoW, before I played WoW, it was probably the Sahara. Now it's Tenaris. <laughs> like, there's even a physical, I have a physical response to Tenaris. Like, when I'm questing in there for long periods of time, especially if there's a sandstorm, I literally get thirsty. And it's because I feel like I'm in a desert. Um, and aesthetically, I think they did a really good job with it. I mean, it's very common throughout. The only reason it doesn't get a 5 in this, it gets a 4. The only reason it doesn't get a 5 is because it's very similar throughout. If it was had some variety, it probably would have gotten a 5. I think aesthetically-wise, Tenaris is amazing. Lore. There's really a lot there. I mean, like the War of the Shifting Sands. You have Zulfarak. You have a, have a high troll presence there. You have pirates on the eastern... Um, on the west, excuse me, on the western coast. You have uh, Anachronos in the Bronze Dragon Flight. You have uh, the Caverns of Time. You have the entrance to Oldham. There's so much lore um, in Tenaris. I can go on and on forever about that. Um, so I gave it a 5 for lore. I think it's one of the better lore zones in the, uh, in the game. Uh, and there's a lot there to talk about and a lot there to read about as well. So Tenaris gets definitely gets a 5. As far as quests, I gave it a 3.5. Um, I don't think it has the variety of Desolus, but I do feel like there are some very interesting quests there. And uh, there's so you have to kill some you have to kill some ogres, you get to kill some Sithilids, you have to kill some pirates. There's a lot of variety, and I think there's a lot of it is go step and fetch quests. A lot of it's kill this many or do that and this, but at least there's variety in uh, in what you have to kill. So I gave it a 3.5. As far as World PvP is concerned. Again, I gave it a three. Uh, it suffers for the same reasons that other places suffer because I, I, I at least it, this is my opinion and my experience. I don't get ganked a lot or even attacked a lot in Tenaris because everyone's just just going about their business pretty much. So um, I gave it a three there. Okay, first place for Kalimdor is actually a two-way tie. So it's actually two zones. I'll give you my uh, first. Well, it doesn't really. There's no order for this, but I'll give you the one that I had first, and that's. Um, Onguro Crater. So Onguro Crater uh, aesthetically gets a 4.5. It's a very unique zone. Uh, it has a land of the lost feel to it. And you're like you walked into a place that's somehow somehow out of place in time. There's dinosaurs. There's like killer plants. There's anything you could think of like you know uh, of a story about or a movie about like going back in time. Um, it's like the movie of Brandon Fraser that I can't think of the name of, but uh, it might have been Land of the Lost. But you go in there and it's you know there's just dinosaurs everywhere, right? So it's so. Um, you never know what's around the next corner. You never know something. They could, never know what's through that thick, th that thick fog that's there. And there's that thick fog, and that gives it a lot of uh, aesthetically interesting uh, things. So, Laura gave it a 4.5. It was a, basically a testing area for the Titans. They were testing different kinds of life forms and different things like that. So, anything to do with the Titans to me is uh, very high on the lore scale. Um, uh, it doesn't really have any direct lore uh, to, to classic WoW, but there's a lot of interesting stuff that'll come into importance in later expansions, and I think that's really important. So I give it a 4.5 for lore. As far as quests are concerned, I give it a 4. I think there's a lot of interesting quests. There's a Lincoln quest line. Um, there is uh, Chasing Amy 01 quest. The quest. There is uh, go out and kill a bunch of dinosaurs and get their scales. There's, a, there's the power crystals. There's all these interesting quests. Um, the Ingro creator that I think really, really give it a, a really interesting feel and really a lot. A lot of the quests can be tedious, and that's why it doesn't get a five. Um, but I think there's a lot of originality in a lot of the quests, and I give it a four for that. World PvP, I gave it a three. Uh, same reasons as before. Ashenvale is my other tied number one spot for Kalimdor. So it's a two A tie, and Ashenvale is the next one. Aesthetically, it gets a five. I mean, I can't. Uh, this is the only one who got aesthetics as a five for me in, in my list. It is the quintessential uh, enchanted forests uh, the color palettes they use are beautiful the purples the greens the oranges um, the signposts the buildings 
uh, it's beautiful. They've put so much work into Ashton Vale that it does definitely deserves a five. I can't say anything better, you know, I can't say anything bad about it. The music, and the music, the music's amazing. I almost forgot about the music, so... As far as lore is concerned, I gave it a 4.5. It's a pretty important lore, uh, especially for this in the second and third second war, um, where the War Song camp comes in and and destroys this ancient, beautiful night elf forest. The night elves have lived lived there for thousands of years. Um, there's satire, demon, demonic corruption, things going on as far as lore is, con- lore is concerned. But the biggest part is that is that War Song versus night elf piece, and that's a huge part of the lore. Grom Hellscream. Um, so. To me, it gets a 4.5 for lore. As far as quests are concerned, um, I think the quests are interesting. They're good, and I gave them a 3, but it's a low-level zone, so you don't really get a lot of interesting quests yet. There are some important caveats to that. There is the Furbog quest, the Reigns uh, quest chain, where you get the, the thing that turns you into a Furbog. There are some interesting quests. Um, and you have to go there for the Water Totem quest for Shaman, so there is some interesting things that are, go away from just a normal step and fetch, but... For the most part, I think the questing is pretty average there. World PvP gets a 4. This is one of the zones where Horde and Alliance meet for the first time. Um, and there, it, it's a 10 level zone. So I think that the, there's two things in there that really get some World PvP going. Um, and you have the lore aspect of PvP as well. So you have, this is like one of the first zones where like Blizzard intentionally tried to kind of Pit, pit the factions to, against each other. So it gets a four for there. That's it for Kalimdor. Let's move into the Eastern Kingdoms. So my number five spot for Eastern Kingdoms is Eastern Plaguelands. Um, as far as aesthetics are concerned, it's not my favorite place. I gave it a 2.5. There are some unique um, doodads and, and, and colors that they use in Eastern Plaguelands, but it's very dreary, very dull, uh, and that's supposed to be that way. You know, it's not like they they wanted to make it beautiful. You can't make Eastern Plaguelands beautiful, but in the same time, it's not something I really like to stay a long time, like Ashenvale or Winter Spring. Um, the drab oranges and browns really don't do anything for it. Uh, but again, that's that's mechanistic. That's really part of the reason why. So lore-wise, I gave it a five. Stratholm, uh, Darthus Quest Line, Naxxramas, the Scourge. Uh, you can go on and on and on. Uh, Eastern Playlands has nothing um, short of the best, some of the best lore in the game. So I give it a five for that. Uh, as far as quests are concerned, I give it a three point five. Um, there's not many quests in EPL, but um, the the quests that are available are pretty interesting. There's quests for Stratholm. There's quests for um, killing the Scourge, which I thought is a very, is a very interesting because you don't really get to do that. Uh, a lot, so I think that's especially for Alliance. So, I mean, uh, if you're a undead starting zone, you have a lot of scourge stuff you can do. But um, so it's very interesting. The quests are interesting, even though they may not be the most original kind of quest ideas. I think they're very interesting quests, and the lore behind the quests are very good. So I gave it a three point five. As far as uh, world PvP is concerned, I gave it a three. It's a high level zone. People want to get the sixty. There really isn't that much PvP. At least I've experienced in, in, in EPL. My number four spot goes to the Hinterlands. Um, the Hinterlands, to me, looks a lot like the Western Pine Forest in the United States. It's beautiful. Um, it, it's a sparser forest than like Ashenvale would be. There's not much trees, but the trees that are there kind of give it a really interesting... It, it, it feels like the tree's gone forever um, because of how sparse they are. Um, and it gives a kind of open feel to it. Um, the troll aesthetics and the troll architecture really makes it awesome as well, so I gave it a... Um, Four. Lore wise, I also gave it a four. It's uh, so you have the um, Amani Empire, the troll wars with the, with the Empire of Ar- Arathor. You have Jinthal Lore, the Wildhammer settlement in the north, the Wildhammer dwarves, um, Gary Peak. Uh, you have the Qualdenil Lodge of a high elf, high elf settlement. You have a lot of interesting lore about the Second War uh, and the ancient troll wars. There's a lot of interesting stuff there as far as lore is concerned. That's why I gave it a four quest they gave it a 3.5 because i would have given it a four but i feel that the quests are a little bit horde sided in hinterlands um and i feel like uh that is something that kind of dampens it a little bit but the but the horde 
questing experience in the Hinterlands is amazing. Gen 3 lore quests are, are ridiculously good. Uh, I love, as you know, I love outdoor five-man content, non, so outdoor non-instance uh, dungeon dungeons, so I think that's really, really a lot of fun. Um, and you have a lot of interesting quests, you have to kill some different kinds of, uh, you know, you have those wolves that are stealth that are a lot of, that can be annoying, but they're a lot of fun as well. So, uh, and then you have the, uh, you come to the Hinterlands a, a lot afterwards, which I gave it a lot of points for as well. Um, so, you, the Hinterlands is, is connection to a lot of different quests, Sunken Temple quests, Zulfarak quests, a lot of interesting stuff there. So, you, have the, the, you know, the Mallet, the Mallet quest is what I'm talking about when I say it was Zulfarak. So, World PvP, I gave it a three. Uh, same. I usually give them threes unless it's like really, really bad. But uh, uh, so three for me is about average. So it's about average. Um, Arathi Highlands is my number three choice for Eastern Kingdoms, just south of the hinterlands. Uh, well, south east-ish of the hinterlands, uh, depending on what part of the hinterlands you're in. I gave it a three as far as aesthetics. It's not. It's a rolling hilly kind of look. It isn't the best looking zone in the world, um, but it definitely has some. It has some interesting, interesting qualities, um, especially the um, those stone, uh, those elemental areas where the stone pillars are. I think it's really cool. As far as lore, I gave it a three point five. It's pretty lore rich. Um, you have the uh, again the Empire of Arathor, Arathor was headquartered there in Strom, which became Stromgard. You have the Orc internment camp, uh, which became Hammerfall. Um, so there's a lot of interesting lore. You have the Misrael quest line. Um, again, so this is pretty interesting, so I gave it 3.5. As far as questing, I'm starting to give it a 4. The Misrael quest line, uh, you have those quests for, for Horde. You have to go and kill those uh, guys in the farm, those like farm hand, the, the all different guys in the farm you have to kill. the uh, You know, you have to kill those, those couriers, or depending on what faction you're in, if you're Alliance, you kill the Forsaken Courier, which is a lot of fun. Uh, if you're Horde, you kill those um, those guys on the horseback. Again, more outdoor five-man content in Stromgard. Uh, whether you're Horde or Alliance, there's both a little bit more for Horde. But um, so I thought that the quests there are really, really good. So I gave it a four. World PvP, I actually gave it a four point five. Um, it, it didn't get a five for obvious reasons, and I think you'll know why once I go into what got a five. But there's a lot of uh, World PvP pull over or, 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 or overflow from another zone, which I'll talk about in a second. So I gave it a 4.5. There's a lot of there's a good amount of world PvP in, in, in Hirathi Highlands. My number two zone in Eastern Kingdoms is Stranglethorn Vale. Aesthetically, it's a jungle. It's amazing. Um, it's a very scary place to go level and quest in. Uh, you never know what's going to come out of the out of the shadows and bite you. Um, so I gave it a four. I think the uh, the palm trees and the dense viney thick jungle. Uh, the rope bridges. Um, it, it's a great, it's a great looking zone. They put a lot of work into it. You can tell. Uh, as far as lore, I gave it a three point five. I think that um, it, the lore is mostly troll based. Uh, the, there's Gorobashi uh, Empire and the um, Akari, which is part of the Gorobashi. And then you have the um, the Zandalari trolls. So there's a civil war between. There was a war between Zandalari and Garabashi, and the Abzul Garub, and you have all that. So there's a lot of in interesting lore. Um, so I, I think that uh, it's definitely a good lore zone. Booty Bay is also really cool. That, that so that's the it was a human settlement that was taken over by the trolls and then taken back by the goblins. So that was pretty cool. So quest I gave it a five. Uh, I actually gave it the highest of all the qu zones. I think there's since it spans 15 levels, there's so many unique quests um, for both factions. Um, then you have the Booty Bay quests. There's a lot of really cool things you can do. Um, and you come back to the zone a lot. The sheer variety spawns the ingenuity um, and uh, originality of a lot of the quests. So, uh, Strength of the Reveal was is a great questing zone. Uh, you have you know the Hemet Nessingori quests. You have Thorian Brotherhood quests. You have like all these different quests that like are, it's just so rich. Um, World PvP. I gave it a five. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, it spans 15 levels. So you have a lot of uh, ganking. It starts a lot of wars, right? For, because of that, it's one of the first zone. Not, it isn't the first zone, but it's one of the first zones that the Horde and Alliance come into contact with each other. Um, so there's a lot of there's just a lot of world PvP. It is in a high level zone, so you have all the perfect things that make it a perfect PvP zone. Um, 
you have a neutral area as far as Booty Bay is concerned. You usually like talk crap with each other in Booty Bay and take it outside. You have you know, both Horde and Alliance have a, have a questing hub there. It's just a, it's the perfect storm. So you gave it a five. All right, Hillsbrad and Alterac. I put them into one zone. That's my number one for Eastern Kingdoms. I put in the one zone because if you think about it, it's the only two zones in the game that literally flow into each other without a, a raw change in the map environment. So usually when you go from one zone to another, like the map changes like right, it's like a line in the sand and the map changes, right? That doesn't happen in Hillsborough and Alterac. And then they even condense it in the one zone after the, after the Cataclysm. So there is some basis to what I'm trying to say. Um, I threw them into one zone. Uh, as far as aesthetics are concerned, I gave it a 3.5. It isn't the most beautiful zone in the world. However, it definitely can be uh, quite beautiful, especially when it snows. Um, so this, when, when it snows, it looks it looks wonderful. Uh, and the Alterac Mountains portion, I think, is better looking than the Hillsbrad portion, but um, still not the best looking zone in the game, but still very, very, very nice. As far as lore concern, I gave it a 5. Uh, there's a lot there. Um, so you have Durnhold Keep, which was an or orc internment camp. You have uh, lots of battles that were during the Second War, and even battles between the Trolls and the uh, Empire of Arathor way before the, the Second War. Uh, Al Al all the all the lore from Alterac, which was a human kingdom as well, it was, a, it was a thriving human kingdom, and now it's in ruins. The Syndicates rise to power. You have all of these really interesting lore, lore points uh, in Alterac and Hillsbrad. I gave it a 5 for that. As far as quests are concerned, I gave it a 4.5. So the quests are really, really good. So I, you go into the, the ruins of Alcturac quests and root out all the ogres. You have to kill some Naga on the coastline. You have the um, uh, the kill some yetis in that yeti cave. You have uh, Dalran quests. You have the storm and internment camp if you're Horde. Um, you have uh, the Horde also has that quest where you have to uh, bring back the, the Hecular's remains quest line. You have. <laughs> You have some great quests, and even the Alliance has some great quests up in the Alterac Mountains. Um, uh, the Syndicate quest lines, um, so it's really interesting stuff up there. Uh, I think it's, it's it's a really good questing zone. And World PvP, again, with Stranglethorn Vale, it gets a 5. I mean, Hillsbred, ver Hillsbred versus South Shore, I mean, like, what what more do you want? Uh, it's, it's, it's the World PvP, it's the birth of World PvP, right? It's the first time the Horde and Alliance come into contact with each other uh, for a lot of players. It also has a pretty high, almost a 5 to 10 level uh, level range difference in the Alliance's favor. The Alliance doesn't quest there until later on. A Horde goes there at level 20-ish. Alliance goes at 2530. Um, so you have an imbalance of power, which causes uh, reaction from 60s. It's the perfect storm, right? It's the perfect storm for World PvP, so I gave it a... Um, a five there so uh so we tally everything up and you can see that my favorite eastern kingdom zone is hillsbrad my favorite is uh, my favorite kalimdor zone is ashenvale but out of all of them which what reigns supreme is hillsbrad and alterac with the highest score um and with an 18 and i think that uh there's a lot driving my favoritism uh and this is this is okay i'm totally it's very subjective because this is a subjective topic I have a lot of nostalgia when it comes to Hillsbrad and Alterac Mountains. I remember leaving the safety of Silver Pine on my Undead Warrior and seeing the other faction for the first time. Having my butt saved at last second by a 60, you know, uh, getting killed, grouping up with people to do the Dungarok quests, those elite dwarf quests up into the north, outdoor five man content, my first time ever doing any outdoor five man content. Um, my first time getting a group together to go down s back to Silver Pine to do Strang of Tr uh, Shadowfang Keep. I have so many memories in Hillsbred and Alterac Mountains that it, it's just, it's my favorite zone. And there's nothing I can, I can't go anywhere. It, it's just a beautiful place. I love it. I love it. All right, guys. Time for Meldor on IRL. Two movies this week. I think this is just turning into a movie uh, review uh, section of my vlogs. Uh, but hopefully one day we'll do something different. So Deadpool and Solo, a Star Wars story. Deadpool, it's it's not your run-of-the-mill Marvel movie. Um, Ryan Reynolds did a great job. Uh, it, it's it's more of the same of the first one. Uh, it's it made me laugh very very much. It's 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 uh, different than all the other Marvel movies as I just said. So I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. I laughed and I had fun. I didn't think, which turned my brain off. 
and that's really really good that's basically about it i i can certainly say about deadpool i enjoyed it go see it you'll laugh a lot um you'll forget your everything else in your life for about two hours uh and you'll get to see some interesting characters that uh you may have never seen on screen there are some no spoilers but there are some interesting um superheroes and anti-heroes maybe that you haven't seen haven't seen and they did a great job the actors were great so the second movie is is solo which i saw two nights ago um as i can say about every non main uh story arc of the new star wars so outside of seven and eight uh rogue one and solo are way better than uh the force awakens and the last jedi uh they i think it i think it stems from the fact that they have less writing on it and they're able to kind of do more with them um and they're not afraid to kind of uh, move away from certain formulae that they think is acceptable um so they did a great job i mean the guy who played han solo uh he is the spitting image of harrison ford um and I, I, it's just, it's really amazing how well he did. I mean, even his cadence, his breathing techniques was all Harrison Ford. There were certain shots where I looked at him and I'm like, holy crap, that's Harrison Ford. Oh wait, no, it's not. It's Alden Ehrenreich. And, it, and it's like, it, it was amazing. It was a lot of fun. It was on the edge of your seat. Uh, special effects were amazing. The fight scenes were amazing. Um, Donald Glover, who played um, Lando Calrissian, did a great job. Uh, Amelia Clark is amazing in everything she does. Uh, Woody Harrelson was was wonderful as usual, um, and it was just I had a lot of fun. And I just wish that they somehow could transfer the uh, what goes into these these off you know offshoots like Rogue One and Solo into the main story arc because it's just so much better. It's just so much better. Um, anyway, that's my personal opinion. Ron Howard directed it which he and he's he's always great so well guys that's the end of Meldron IRL um and the end of the vlog I hope this was uh, interesting for you I really want to know if you can use the same scoring technique that I gave aesthetics lore quest and world pvp you can also forget world pvp if world pvp is not something into you let me know what your favorite zones are in, in vanilla wow um and why uh and uh I'd like to hear from you guys and some feedback so we have uh, some new dev talks coming out Super Plate Brothers, we're sorry, but it's been really, really tough to get them done. We've been very busy. Uh, that's why it's been so long to get me to get a vlog out. So hopefully we'll get some out soon. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Discord and on Twitter. Um, the links are, are below. And uh, stay tuned for some more stuff. We got some interesting stuff coming up. Some some new ideas. If you and also if you have some interesting things that you want me to cover in a video, there's a separate channel on our discord for that specific thing there's like a content suggestion section so go in there and let me know what you, what you want to do what you want me to cover and talk about and i'll do that it could be a vlog it could be a anything so just let me know so all right guys it's been great uh see you soon thanks for watching see ya